Hey viewers, this is SkyFi Audio coming at you from Glen Rock, New Jersey. We recently did a video on the Sony CDP-101, which was the first uh, CD player to come to the market from Sony. Uh, well, this is the essentially the equivalent or the alternative to the 101, which is Philips effort at their first CD player, the CD-100. Uh, they were both developed uh, jointly or at the same time, and it was essentially a race to go to market between the two units. Uh, Sony uh, was released in the Asian and, and U.S. markets, while this Philips unit came out in the European market. I've got a really cool sample here. It's it's a complete unit, meaning that we've got not just the player in, in great working condition, but we've got this great book that it comes with and the original packaging for it. Uh, the Sony CDP-101 quickly sold after we did a video on it, um, and um, I thought I'd get a video out on this unit before... Uh, it leaves uh, since it's such a historically important CD player. Now, these are not great sounding CD players. If you're an audiophile, this is not for you. This is more for someone that is into uh, collecting really neat artifacts of, uh, of vintage audio history. And this is certainly up in the desirability area. This particular unit is a 220 volt version. I'm not quite sure if they ever released the 110 volt version. And you'll see that we've got it connected to a large um, 220 uh, power supply and there are some pretty neat features on the Philips that we didn't really see very often and I'll go through them and show you what it's about. The The most notable thing compared to the Sony is the fact that this is a top loading CD player much like a record player would have been at the era. So this would have probably had to go on the top shelf of your stereo rack, and stereo racks were super popular back in the 80s. Uh, this was uh, released in 1983, so the average person would have at home, uh, you know, a, a rack filled with, with matching audio components. And I would suspect that they would take their turntable out and, and sit this at the top shelf. That's what Phillips was thinking. Um, because it is, in fact, top loading, as you can see from pressing this button here. Uh, pretty neat. It's got a hydraulically dampened uh, top and a floating magnetic puck here that will secure the CD. The other thing that was notable and very different than the the Sony is the fact that this was an arcing uh, laser mechanism, meaning that it swung on an arc as it read the disc, while the Sony would have been tangential. It would have been straight across from one side from center to outward. Uh, the other big notable difference was the number of bits. Uh, this is a 14-bit unit, while Sony's was a 16-bit. Um, Philips did achieve 16 bits by oversampling the 14, so it resulted in, in a, a fairly good-sounding CD player, probably better than the Sony was. Uh, a lot of people said that the, the Philips unit had, was a little less fatiguing than the Sony was because of the analog filter that it used to, to process the, the, the sampling. Um, so let me fire this unit up and show you what you can expect from it. Um, so I'll push it up and load a CD right here. Just drop it into place. And uh, nothing happens. So I suspect we'll have to hit play. So here it's spun out and identified the fact that we've got nine tracks. Let me lower the volume. And that it is playing track number one. Um, so essentially there is no clock as you can see there's no elapsed time or remaining time in this particular unit while the Sony did have it at the time so uh, it's a bit of a disappointing feature back in the 80s but a cool thing t in today's standard uh, the fact that it is in fact just uses uh, an LED uh, bar graph to illustrate the track that's playing and I'll fast forward here so you can see what it's doing. So I'm going to pause it, and this will turn red when you pause it, and go away when you set it to play. A stop resets the program selector, or the number of tracks, and a play. Bring it back. So what you see it's not doing, which what almost every CD player did after this period, is it does not engage and read the, the TOC, the top of track, which contains the information about the contents of the disk. Pretty much when you turn on the unit and close the door, 
nothing happens. Here with a conventional CD player, it would spin up for a second or two and give us the contents of the desk. And in this particular unit, it doesn't do it until you press play. So again, let's go fast forward on track one. So fast forward essentially just uh, moves the track forward a bit. And if you want to go to the next one, you would press the select button and it'll scroll to the next track. So it would take, in this case, nine button presses to get to the last one. Press, sorry, press the play button. Here you can hear the laser mechanism advance all the way to uh, track number nine. Not, not very quick at all. Uh, the server motor must be pretty basic and, and simple in design. So now we are track nine. Pause and play. So again, you would press, uh, let me give a better angle here. So select repeatedly. So let's go to track six, for example. <laughs> kind of cool how it executes the uh, track search. And interesting that it, it shows the remaining tracks. Let me go to select and go to track one and play. Yep, this might be officially the world's slowest access CD player. But in any event, a really neat piece of audio history. Uh, this particular sample is working super well. It's clean. Uh, the motor's responsive, and uh, I've played a couple of discs through it without any glitches. Let's have a closer look at the manual. Super cool. looks to be the original invoice for 948 what I don't know I guess whatever currency maybe Swiss francs very cool actually this is a German invoice so it must be uh, in Deutschmarks and I don't see a date on it, which is a bummer. It'd be nice to know if this was in fact the original invoice or not. Mm -hmm. Great logo there for the for the store. Oh yeah, here we go, 1994. Let's see here, 21, three of 94. So that's March of 1984, right after this unit was released. I, I think I said earlier it was released in 1983, so this is in fact original invoice from it. We also have the instruction manual. Quite a nice color affair. Uh, you know, a bunch of different languages. Very cool. Then we've got um, a brochure on Philips lasers. Let's see if I can take that out. Telling us about the technology of their three beam laser. Really sweet piece of marketing history here. This top brochure here is about digital music. So they're showing here some telephones, calculators, a video game made by Philips, and the watch. So this is a promotional 
material for the digital disk. Keep telling us about uh, bit rates and conversions, filtering, really neat. Going on to the second layer here, we've got um, what is probably a catalog for, for gramophone records. I won't take this one out, but it's uh, not here. Here's the compact disc promotional booklet for gramophone records from 1984 catalog. And the new sound experience international catalog from Philips. This is also from their labels. Not, not a lot of CDs available in 1984. This is fairly early in the evolution of the compact disc. So maybe a, a few hundred discs available in their catalog that were converted from analog recordings. And we've got our repeat lasers and repeat digital for sure. And another catalog for the record. I mean for the the classical disc catalog. And on the right side of this binder, we see this uh, demonstration disc, I believe. Compact disc. The pure perfect sound of Philips compact disc too. So this must be some sort of demonstration CD. Yes, in fact. And last, in here, this must be the warranty card. Don't know what would come in this slot. Maybe some extra fuses or a cleaning brush of some sort. But other than that, uh, pretty complete binder accompanying the CD100. The box itself is in, is in good shape. It's a folding box with a styrofoam insert for holding the unit. And the original RCA cable from Philips. So here you have it, the CD100 from Philips. First European CD player from 1983. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Let us uh, provide any feedback. If you get additional information or history on the CD100, we'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much.